Today my talk is about some sub varieties with some fixed degree condition. And so here, uh, uh, my talk is based on the joint work with Marcus Brodman and Dr. Vansab Lee and Peter Schenzel. So red X in PR we don't degenerate for the sub variety. And here N is dimension, C is co-dimension, and D is the degree of X. And then uh, there is a well-known inequality between the degree and the co-dimension. So, the degree is always bigger than or equal to the co-dimension first one. And if the equality falls, then the variety is uh, by definition called a uh, variety of minimal degree. And I can write this variety simply B and D. And this was classified more than 100 years ago. Because here uh, I want to suppose that the co dimension is positive, then there are three kinds of varieties of minimum degree. First, uh, the quadratic type of surface. Title, my talk is about the next case. So from now on, I suppose that the degree is putting in the first two and the S is not a cone. Of course, cone structure is not important in the classification. I think that the Hilbert function is one of the most important fundamental invariants of project variety. And you can read off the dimension, co-dimension, and also the degree from the Hilbert function. And conversely, here, if you uh, give this condition on the degree, then the result says that indeed the whole geometric and the algebraic properties are determined by this simple condition. And also, so, we expect some similar result for the next case. And first you can ask what which feature varieties satisfy this condition. So let me first remind you of the uh, classification result by Pujita. is uh, uh, analysis by using the delta genus, we can divide the varieties 
into two cases. So actually it's either Concentrate on later. I will concentrate on the second type. So here I uh, mentioned his uh, result in this way. And I mean, obviously you can divide the varieties in two cases. First, uh, normal and linearly normal. One and non-normal or non-linearly normal. So this statement says nothing about the first case. Anyway, for the second case, he uh, first considered the non-linearly normal case. In that case, you can consider the linearly normal embedding, and you can easily see that in that case, the linearly normal embedding is a variety of minimal degree. So you can see x as the isomorphic projection of a variety of minimal degree. And for non-normal case, you can take the normalization and by using Pistas uh, result about the delta is not zero case, you can see that the normalization is realized as the linear projection also. Okay, so you can uh, see that if the first condition fails to hold, then it is the image of a linear projection. say some more detail about the first case, let me remind you to call the definition of benefit of variety. remind you of the classification theory of the first case. And here I wrote some table which was given by 
더 퓨지타 엘포 스무스 케이스 더 아, maybe you should first consider some trivial cases. So if uh, for curve case for each d bigger than or equal to 3, you can find some projective model, obviously from elliptic curves. And if d is 3, then x is hyper, uh, cubic hypersurface. And if d is 4, then because x is a r i t h m e t i c a l l y equivalent Macaulay, you can see that x is a conflicting detection of two quadrics. And so for, this case, for these two cases, there is no bound of the dimension of x. And for higher degree case, as you can see from this table, the dimension is bounded by 6, and also the degree is bounded by 9. Uh, and except for These three cases, also you can see that for each case, there exists a unique projective model of the projective equivalence. That means two sub varieties in a projective space are projectively equivalent if there is some coordinate change which maps the first one to the second one. And so you can easily see that all the varieties are uh, projective. Uh, there, at each case, there is a unique projective model, except I don't know the answer for these cases. If the general two smooth side plane section of Grassmannian are projectively equivalent to one up. And today my goal is to provide some similar picture for the second case for non normal p e r p e t u a l cases. So 
how you can describe a single row cost. And it's the set of points where this free image has at least two points. Just because this map is no one like this map. Okay, so now we, because this is linear projection, uh, concerning the single row cost, we can consider the so-called entry row cost and the second cost. the linear space. are generated by uh, linear CCGs, then this is true. This is true. 
maybe because y is very well known variety, so maybe this this is classical result. Recently, uh, Broadman and Chandler proved some uh, some result about the uh, algebraic property of X by using these geometric information. Test the the arithmetic depth of X. That is the arithmetic depth of the coordinate ring of x is equal to t plus 2. That is the dimension of the second locus plus 2, or equivalently the dimension of the singular locus of x plus 2. So because x is obtained as a linear projection, you can easily guess that all properties of x should be determined by the relative location of q with the original variety y. And, but it is not easy to capture some uh, algebraic, uh, uh, precise algebraic relation. And here, uh, they proved some relation between this arithmetic property and this geometric property of the projection. And First, the regularity of x is known to be 3, and uh, if t <coughs> t is negative, then x is linearly normal. These are known for this x. And so if t is minus 1, that is, if the projection is uh, isomorphic projection, then obviously the depth formula holds. Okay? Obviously, x is nonlinearly normal, and hence it has depth 1. So you can concentrate on this case. And in this case, you can see that the three regularity means that it is uh, uh, k normal for all k bigger than or equal to 2, and also it is linearly normal. This means that. Uh, in this case, x is arithmetically normal, and hence depth is bigger than y equal to 2. And, and also, we have now a chance to use this sequence in order to uh, obtain some vanishing of the structure shape. And here, the problem is now, you know the support of f, but we don't know, this is not enough to uh, use this sequence to get some vanishing. And they proved that did this shape is the structure shape of the singular locus twisted by minus 1. So by combining, uh, by using this fact, you can get some desired formula for the depth of x. OK, so this theorem says that the second locus, the second locus of y at q is important in order to describe the algebraic property of x. My next uh, section is about the possible structure of the second locus. <laughs> There are two cases why. Why is uh, why is uh, imaginary surface or a rational normal scroll and um, in this case Thanks. 
first the ambient space as the union of these three uh, subsets. And the point is, in this step, you can omit this is empty. And hence, obviously, the depth is one. And in this case, it is well known that the second locus is some spoonie. And x is isometrically between Mercury. And indeed, uh, here in this case, f is the, the complete intersection of two quadrics. So it has degree 4.
Finally, the scroll type 1, R minus 1. So you have line and uh, another rational normal curve, and some rulings. And if you choose a point in a plane spanned by this line and this line, then the second locus is in this form. And the second one is when the scroll is this form, then the scroll is also the join of uh, is obtained by during the curve and uh, this curve. And if you choose point Q, the span of this pony, then the second row course is exactly <coughs> this pony. And for the last case, Consider this uh, three fold scroll. This is P3. This, this is the third scroll, that's one one. This is the rational domain code. So it has uh, also a ruling, and uh, the three fold is the union of these planes. And if you choose a point in this three, uh, three space, then the second row proceeds. This now uh, by using this results I want to discuss about the Elbert case. I consider again the same situation and in this case X is the test Obviously this new normal. The depth is maximal, and by using this formula, you can prove that this is the case when the second locus has maximal dimension in some sense. Realize this equality only for the following cases. This trivial case I plus one dimension, uh, the I plus one letter normal curve, and uh, so this has dimension zero. bounded by 2, so the dimension of n, dimension of x should be bounded by 3. Okay. There is no for a higher dimensional normal perpetual variety. But uh, for, for example, in this case, you have many there is many possible choice of Q in this plane, so in this three space. So if you choose two points, then you can ask if the projection image 
is a projectively equivalent to or not. So, all right. Next one, F2 be the images of this projection. Then, these two uh, projectively equivalent to any series of Q1 and Q2. These are relatively equivalent if and only if the join of Y with Q1 and the join of Y with Q2 are projectively equivalent. And uh, because we know, we already know many uh, situations about the automorphisms of Y, you can find some automorphism of Y which is, which is, uh, I'm sorry, which is maps Q1 to Q2. And hence, you can get some projective equivalence of the cones and hence the same equivalence of the, of the images. And for surface case, also you can do the same uh, game. In this case, the single opus is line. So because the normalization map is unique, uh, you can, the type of Y is an invariant of X. This is the type of the second locus is also the invariant of X because it governs the normalization map. And finally, Map is also uh, important to, take, to classify variety. So, uh, let me explain uh, the situation for some uh, special case. So in this case, the type of Y and the type of the second row course are precisely determined. And uh, this map, this map depends on the characteristic. Okay, so if the characteristic of the base field is not two, then X is uniquely determined by, uh, by R. And if the characteristic is two, then uh, this, this map is, has two types. First one is by because because the characteristic two case this is a strange curve. And 
category is the user provided characteristic and there will be two possible first uh, tools. We can distinguish these two customers for R is equal to 2 and 3. And actually, we don't know yet if R is bigger than, um, bigger than 4. And for R3 case, the problem is the tangent lines curve is parameterized by a line. So if you choose a point outside of this line, then you get some ordinary possible curve. But if you put down the curve from a point in this line, then you will get some strange curve. So that is how you can distinguish the two curves. But for higher R, we don't know how to distinguish it. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.